The Myers-Briggs personality test is the granddaddy of all personality tests. It's about 100 years old and it was based on the work of Carl Jung. Carl Jung wrote hundreds and hundreds of pages on the 16 personality types that he saw in the world. And a generation later, people came along and codified that research and those insights into the Myers-Briggs type indicator. The MBTI looks at four different categories of how people live their life. The first category is how you give and receive energy. The second category is how you give and receive information. The third category is how you make decisions. And the fourth category is about how you organize and prioritize your time. So let's start at the first category, energy. The options are either extrovert or introvert. If you're an E, which stands for extroversion, that means that you gain energy from being around other people. If you're an I, which stands for introversion, that means that you fill up by being alone and being more introspective. Extroverts look out to the world. Introverts look into themselves. People often assume that extroverts are very talkative and introverts are shy, but that's not always necessarily true. For example, I'm introverted, but I can turn on my charm and my charisma to make YouTube videos, to speak, to be in front of clients. No problem at all. It just means that I have to schedule downtime in between those sort of activities to refuel and recharge. Now let's look at the second category, which is about how you process information. You can either be an S, which is a sensing person, or an N, which is an intuitive person. People that are sensors are realists. They gain information about the world from their five senses. They pay attention to concrete facts and details based on what they can see, touch, taste, feel, and smell. Intuitives, on the other hand, rely a bit more on their sixth sense, which is sort of like a gut feeling or the still small voice within. While sensors are more fine-tuned to the details of life, intuitives look at the big picture and see how things connect. The third letter in your personality style is all about how you make decisions. You can either be a T, which is thinking, or an F, which is feeling. The thinkers are very logical. They're often bringing out pen and paper to do a pros and cons list. They value fairness. They like finding flaws in an argument and they're generally pretty level-headed. Feelers, on the other hand, tend to base their decisions on their values and how their decisions might affect other people. And finally, we have the last category, organization. In this category, you're either a J for judging or a P for perceiving. The judging type is the classic type A personality. They're on time, they value rules and deadlines, they're structured, they tend to have a daily routine. For example, every morning, I'm at the gym at seven o'clock and then I go to the grocery store. So obviously, I'm a judger, I'm not a P. Perceivers, on the other hand, are more spontaneous and flexible. They see deadlines as negotiable and they like to improvise. Are we there yet? We get there when we get there. So by now, you should know your personality type and have some sort of clarity into what it means. Now let's take the leap from the theory of the personality results to the practice of life. So my personality type is an INTJ, which means I'm introverted, intuitive, I'm a thinker and I'm a judger. So that's really, really helpful when I think about how to set up my life and my career in a way that works for my natural personality. For example, in my first career as a classical musician, there will be days where I had to interact with literally hundreds of people for eight to 12 hours at a time. That was hell for me. Well, now after having worked with what it means to be an INTJ for several years, I realized that I was often putting myself in an environment that invalidated my natural personality when I was at work. These days, the way I've set up my work as a coach and a speaker and an author, it really works for my introverted personality style. Sometimes I have to be around a lot of people, but it's pretty rare, and I can schedule big breaks to refuel and recharge in between those interactions. It's also helpful to know that I'm an intuitive personality, and my intuition tells me that there are probably less intuitives in the world than there are sensors. Now, I'm really lucky because my best friend and my silent partner for this channel, he's a sensor. So that means that we see the world in very different ways. We can experience the same situation and get totally different information. And as a result, when we synthesize the two views rather than arguing over the two views, we actually come up with a third level of information that's higher than just the intuitive or just the sensing. When I'm dealing with other people, it's really helpful for me to remember that I make decisions based on thoughts more than I do feelings. The reason this is so helpful is that people who are a thinking style without meaning to can invalidate people who are more feeling style. If I'm sharing my correctness with someone in a way that's really invalidating their feelings, their values, and the way they see the world, then I'm really creating a rift between the two of us. So even if I'm right, I'm actually wrong. That's been a really valuable insight that I've gotten from the MBTI. Finally, when we look at organization, it's really helpful for me to know 
that I thrive with structure and routine. I used to judge people who were late. I actually took offense and felt like they were disrespecting me. But through the MBTI, I learned that some people just have a different concept of time than I do. So once again, this fourth category of the MBTI has taught me that I'm allowed to have my preference and my personality in my way, but I should also allow other people to have their way. And when there's conflict, let's compromise. Let's figure out a middle ground. I think I like this little guy. I love this one. You know, you could always compromise and breed them together. Dobrawawa. That's my spiel about the Myers-Briggs type indicator. This was very much so a 5,000 foot overview. If you'd like me to make a future video about the Myers-Briggs that's a little more in depth, please let me know. And also leave me any questions you might have about how to further apply the insights of your personality results to your work in your life. If you found value from this video, please hit that magical red subscribe button. And as always, I wish you nothing but the best in your life's journey to becoming all that you truly are.